Uh, Fox News alerted some great reporting from our Pentagon and our White House team. We now can confirm that the White House is authorizing special operation forces. So that's, you know, uh, SEAL units, uh, Rangers, Delta forces to head to Syria to help in the fight against ISIS. But that's not all. Uh, even though we have that number, we're, th that's what we're working with at this time. We also understand that there's going to be more of an effort inside Iraq, or especially around the key city of Ramadi, and working in conjunction with the Iraqi government to battle ISIS. That there's also also going to be a special operations force, ba like a base, I think is a is not a correct word if you're imagining a big, a big military base, but at least a staging area in northern Iraq where some of these operations may or may not be out of. So this is the information we have at this time, but it's an interesting change of pace from the White House when it comes to putting boots on the ground, either in Syria or Iraq. Uh, Mark Dubowitz is joining us, executive director at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. We're going to talk a little bit about Iran, Mark, because that was another breaking new news item over Overnight. But what's, what's your reaction when you hear about special operation forces going directly into Syria and perhaps more action in Iraq? Well, Jed, I think it's a recognition by the White House that their strategy against ISIS has been an abject failure. I think this is an attempt tactically to try and redress that. But the problem is strategically the White House continues to make the same mistake, which is that the support for ISIS comes from the reality that Sunnis in Syria and Iraq feel brutalized by the Assad regime and the Iranian overlords and the perception that the U.S. is actually focused on reconciliation with the Iranian regime rather than fighting the regime and Bashar Assad. That is interesting. I want to ask you about this, this American that we now know is in prison in Iran. Before I get to that, that is what kind of jumps out at these headlines, is working more closely with the Iraqi government begs the question about working more closely with Iran, because we know Iran and Iraq are now very linked. Uh, both uh, the governments very much backed by, by Shia Islam, and there's a big question about how active Iran is in Iraq as in Syria. Do you think we have to be wary of that partnership with the Iraqi government because of that? I think so. I mean, the Iraqi government today is, is effectively controlled by the Iranians. Uh, the Iranians control Bashar Assad in Syria. And so we're, we're, you know, we're trying to defeat ISIS. But the Sunnis, again, recognize that the, the enemy, their enemy, the, the force that's brutalizing their people, is backed by Iran. And it's because of Iranian weaponry and Iranian men that the Syrian Sunnis and the Iraqi Sunnis are being murdered and brutalized. We cannot win against ISIS until we tackle Iran directly, and I'm afraid this administration doesn't understand that. So there's, these are the difficult dynamics uh, that are ongoing inside Iraq and inside Syria as well. Then you have the news overnight that we have another American uh, in prison in Iran. Apparently this happened a few weeks ago, maybe 10 days ago or so, but we're just now learning about it. His name is Simak Namazi. Uh, his family immigrated to the United States more than 30 years ago, and he holds this dual American-Iranian citizenship, much like Jason Rezaian, the Washington Post uh, journalist who's now in prison in Iran. He works in Dubai, um, uh, Namazi, and he was apparently arrested while visiting a friend in Tehran, which sounds like a very routine visit, Mark. What do you, what do you make of this? Well, he's the fourth Iranian-American who has been imprisoned by the regime. Um, he's been very active in trying to promote business ties between Iran and Western Europe and the United States. Uh, he's closely associated with the Iran lobby in Washington, an organization called the National Iranian American Council, and was pushing for the Iran deal in reconciliation with, with Iran. So I think what you're seeing now is uh, that Mr. Namazi has found himself uh, in between three essential mafia families that control Iran, the Rafsanjani Rouhani crowd, the Revolutionary Guards, and the Office of the Supreme Leader. And I think it puts a, put, should put to rest the delusion that there's any moderate forces in Iran. Instead, there's a power play between three mafia families. Well, that's really confusing because we even know that the Ayatollah just came out recently and said that he supports the, the nuke deal. So if this is a, an American-Iranian uh, citizen who is also supporting that deal and seems to be working in favor of, of more outreach out of Iran, why would he be targeted? Well, he's targeted because he's uh, fallen out of favor with the Supreme Leader and or the Revolutionary Guards and their intelligence services. Again, Jenna, whether or not they all support the Iran deal, the fact of the matter is I think they all have common objectives, but now they're fighting for the spoils of the tens of billions of dollars in economic relief that are expected to flow back into Iran. Ah. And so you've got three mafia families fighting over the spoils. Sound familiar? 
Uh, we've seen that well, many times before. It's interesting you bring it up. The reason why I keep going back to the Iran deal is, is because of this final point, which is that many in support of that deal say, listen, this is the beginning of these open, open diplomatic relationships between our two countries. This is forever going to change our relationship. I know you disagree with that. And obviously you think this is some evidence of that happening. I guess the question is now, what do we, what do, we do about it? Here's just another American who's being imprisoned in Iran. We don't even know why. What leverage do we have? Well, Jenna, we've diminished our leverage, as we've discussed many times on your show. Um, in the post-deal environment, the Iranians have not only arrested another American, but they've tested a long-range ballistic missile capable of carrying a warhead in violation of UN Security Council resolutions. Uh, they're executing hundreds of, of Iranians. Their, their human rights abuses have actually accelerated under President Rouhani. And uh, obviously in Syria and Iraq, the Iranians are on the march and are responsible for the regional bloodshed. So I think we're left with uh, our, our assumptions, which are increasingly delusions, that this is a moderate, pragmatic Iranian regime that we can reconciliate with. Um, well, in the future. It brings us full circle, doesn't it? As we started the conversation about our actions, uh, new actions potentially in Iraq, working closely with the Iraqi government that's linked to Iran and, and wondering about some of these partnerships and how they're really going to pan out for us, uh, short term and long term. Mark, interesting. Thank you for rolling with the breaking news. We appreciate it. Thanks so much, Jenna.